Hello everyone, and welcome to my tutorial on how to get your Dreamcast online using DreamPi. So what exactly is DreamPi? DreamPi is custom software for the Raspberry Pi mini computer that was created by Luke Benstead. It takes your existing high-speed internet and transforms it into a dial-up connection that can be used by your Dreamcast. While there have been other methods of doing this in the past, this one is by far the easiest and cheapest. It's also a lot more polished and streamlined than the other methods, and has a fantastic service called Dreamcast Now that shows when other DreamPi users are online and what they're playing. If you're looking to get your Dreamcast online, DreamPi is definitely the way to go. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need and how to set it up. So let's get started. Okay, so here's what you'll need. You'll need a Raspberry Pi. Any model will do, as long as it has an Ethernet port. And while it's not required, I do recommend getting a case as well, otherwise you'll have an exposed circuit board, which is not usually a good thing. You'll also need a standard RJ45 Ethernet cable, a Linux-compatible USB modem, I recommend the Dell NW147, a micro USB cable, one or two standard phone cables, how many you'll need will depend on how you're supplying the line voltage. Now I'll get to that in a second either a standard SD card or a micro SD card. Which one you'll need will depend on which Raspberry Pi model you go with. If you go with an original Raspberry Pi, you'll need a standard size SD card, but if you go with the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, you'll need a micro SD card. Either way, I recommend going with at least a 4 gigabyte card. And finally, you'll need a way to supply line voltage. There are a couple ways to do this. The easiest way is with a telephone line simulator. The one I'm using here is a Viking DLE200B. If you go with this method, you'll simply run a phone cable from the USB modem on the Raspberry Pi to one port on the simulator and run another phone cable from the other port to your Dreamcast modem, and this will supply the line voltage that's needed. The only problem with going the phone line simulator route is that they can be very expensive. This particular model can go for over $100, but if you're patient, you can find them listed for under $30 on eBay. The other method to supply the line voltage is with a line voltage inducer. This isn't something you can simply purchase though, you'll need to build it yourself. And that's what I'll be covering next. Okay, so here's what you'll need if you're going to build a line voltage inducer. A 0.47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 380 ohm resistor, and either one or two 9 volt battery connectors. If you have a North American Dreamcast, you'll want one battery connector. If you have a PAL Dreamcast, you'll need two. You'll also need some wire strippers or an X-Acto knife. And depending on how you're going to put this all together, you'll need either a soldering iron and some solder, and or some electrical tape. If you have a PAL Dreamcast and need two battery connectors, the first thing you'll do is connect the red wire on one battery connector to the black wire on the other. This essentially just links the two together to make one double battery connector. So the first thing you'll need to do is take your phone cable and cut a 3 inch section of the phone cable jacket and remove it from the cable, being careful not to cut the wires that are inside. Once you have the section of jacket removed, you should see four wires, red, yellow, black, and green. You'll want to cut the red wire in the center and cut away about a quarter of an inch of the jacket on each end. And now it's time to connect everything together. Now, as I said earlier, there are a couple ways to do this. You can either solder everything together, which would give you the best connection, or you can just use electrical tape. The first thing we'll connect is the capacitor, which goes in between the two red wires. The next step is to take the resistor and connect one end to one of the red wires, doesn't matter which one, and then connect the other end to the black wire on the 9 volt battery connector. And finally, take the red wire from the battery connector and connect it to the other red wire on the phone cable. And one final step that I do recommend doing is taping over all the exposed sections of wires with electrical tape. And that's it, you have successfully built a line voltage inducer. All that's left now is to connect the 9 volt batteries. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is download the latest DreamPi image and write it to our SD card. Now, I'm only going to be covering how to do this on Windows because I assume that's what most of you will be using, but I will put a couple links in the description to show you how to do this on macOS and Linux. 
So the first thing you'll want to do is open up the web browser of your choice. In my case, it's Mozilla Firefox. Once that's opened up, you'll want to go to dreamcastlive.net. And once that loads up, you'll want to go over to the download section. So once you're in the download section, you'll want to look for the two files that we need. The first is the latest DreamPy image, which in this case is version 1.2 as of this video, and also the Win32 disk imager. Go ahead and download both of these. The next thing we're going to want to do is plug in the SD card that we'll be using with the DreamPy. You can plug this into any standard SD card reader. If you have a laptop, chances are you probably have an SD card reader built into it, but if not, you can use an external USB card reader. As soon as you plug in the SD card, you should see a window like this pop up. Please take note of the drive letter, in this case it's E. If you do not see this window pop up, you can open up computer and take a look there to see what the drive letter is. If you're still not sure, if you have multiple devices plugged into your computer, it may be a little bit confusing, so just unplug the SD card and plug it back in to see which one disappears and comes back. Just take note of this drive letter as you will need it later. The next thing we'll have to do is install the Win32 Disk Imager. So just double click on that, click Run, click Yes at the Security Prompt, click Next, accept the agreement, Next again, Next again, Next again, and we can create a desktop icon just to make it easy to find, and click Install and wait for it to finish. The next thing we'll need to do is extract the DreamPy image from the zip file. All you have to do is right click on the zip file and click Extract All. And then when the window pops up, click Extract and wait for it to finish. Now what you'll want to do is open up the Win32 Disk Imager. And once you have that open, make sure you have the correct drive letter selected under Device. This is the same drive letter that you took note of earlier. Once you have the drive letter selected, click the blue folder icon and open up the DreamPy image that you extracted earlier. Once you have that selected, we are all set to write the image, so just click Write and click Yes to continue. And that's it! We now have the DreamPy image written to the SD card. Okay, so now that we have everything we need, it's time to put everything together. The first thing we're going to do is plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Now take the USB modem and plug it into any of the free USB ports. And if you're using a line voltage inducer, you're going to plug one end of that line voltage inducer into the modem. And if you're using the phone line simulator, you'll just plug a standard phone cable into the modem. The next step is to take an Ethernet cable from your home router and plug it into the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi. If you're using a phone line simulator, you'll want to plug the other end of the phone cable that's coming from the modem on the Raspberry Pi into one of the ports on the phone line simulator, and you'll take another phone cable and plug it into the other port. Now take either the other end of the line voltage inducer or the other cable that's coming from the phone line simulator and plug it into your Dreamcast modem. And now it's time to power the Raspberry Pi. In order to do that, you simply plug in one end of the micro USB cable into the Raspberry Pi and the other end into any USB power source. This can be a USB port on a computer, or probably what I'd recommend is using a smartphone charger. You'll know the Raspberry Pi is powered on when you see blinking status lights. And now take a look at your USB modem. Once the Raspberry Pi is completely booted up and ready to go, both of these lights should be lit up. And now it's time to configure the Dreamcast and test the connection. To do this, I'll be using XDP Browser, but you can use any version of PlanetWeb or DreamKey as well. The configuration will be the same no matter which web browser you choose. So head on over to your web browser options. Go down to Network Info. On the Network Info page, select Information Setup. And select No when this window pops up. Under Phone Number Number 1, type in 111-1111. For the login ID, type in Dream, and for the login password, type in Dreamcast. For primary DNS, use 46.101.91.123, and for the secondary DNS, use 8.8.8.8, .8 and leave proxy server blank. The rest of the settings aren't necessary, so just keep hitting forward and then click OK at the end. Once you're back at the main options page, hit the Save button. Now go down to the URL button at the bottom of the page and type in www.google.com and hit enter. 
When this window pops up, select Yes and wait for the Dreamcast to connect and load the page. If the page loads successfully, then congratulations, your Dreamcast is now connected to the World Wide Web. So as I mentioned earlier, Dreamcast Now is a service that allows you to see when other DreamPie users are online and what they're playing. By default, you'll be assigned a random username and a generic avatar, but chances are you'll probably want to at least change your username to something a bit more descriptive than unnamed 0000. To do this, the first thing we'll need to do is plug the Raspberry Pi into a TV or monitor. Simply take any standard HDMI cable, plug one end into the Raspberry Pi, and the other end into an HDMI input on your TV or monitor. Now power on the Pi and take a look at the output on the screen. Once it's fully booted up, you should see a line that says My IP Address Is. Take note of this IP address and head on over to your computer. Once on your computer, open up your favorite web browser and navigate to dreamcast.online slash now. Once the page is fully loaded, click on the Configure button at the top right of the page. At this point, Dreamcast Now will try and automatically detect your DreamPi, but this doesn't always work. That's where the IP address comes in. Simply type your IP address into the box and click the button that says Detect. And now you should see a page like this where you can configure your username and your avatar. First thing you can do is type in any username you want in this box. To set your avatar, you'll need to create an account on Gravatar.com if you don't already have one. Simply navigate to Gravatar.com, click on the Create Gravatar button, and fill in your information. Once you've created your Gravatar account, you can then upload an avatar. And now that you have an account on Gravatar, you can simply type in your email address that you use to sign up for the account, and click the Update Profile button. And that's it, you now have your own custom username and avatar for Dreamcast Now. And that concludes this tutorial on how to get your Dreamcast online using DreamPi. If you have any issues, make a post in the Dreamcast Talk forum thread in the video description and we'll be glad to help you out. While you can post questions in the YouTube comments, I recommend posting anything technical at Dreamcast Talk as you'll be able to get more help there. If you were able to get online successfully, check out DreamcastLive.net for instructions on how to connect to the private servers for each game, a schedule of weekly online events, leaderboards, and all the latest news relating to Dreamcast Online. Also be sure to send a thank you to DreamPie's creator Luke Benstead by posting a comment on his blog or shooting him a tweet on Twitter. Links will be in the description. If you found this video helpful, let me know by posting a comment, liking the video, or subscribing if you so desire. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you online soon.